Hop on! I've prepared a tour around Earth's fellow planets. Let's start with Mercury, the smallest planet in the solar system. During the day, the temperature on the surface of this planet can reach 800 degrees Fahrenheit, and during the night, it can drop to negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperatures here are so extreme because the planet has no atmosphere. Instead of it, Mercury has a thin exosphere. That's one of the reasons why Mercury is not habitable. The temperatures and solar radiation are too extreme for any organism to survive there. Now let's imagine there's a way to live on Mercury. Then what would life there look like? Mercury's surface resembles that of the moon. Over time, meteorites left lots of marks on it. Unlike the moon's surface, Mercury is grayish brown. Now look up. The sun on Mercury would appear almost three times as large as it does on Earth. The sunlight would be almost seven times brighter. I wonder what type of sunglasses people would wear if we lived there. Can life appear on this planet in the future? Don't get your hopes up, it's very unlikely. Now, how about landing on Venus? You might think the hottest planet in our solar system is Mercury since it's the closest to the sun. But in reality, this title goes to Venus. What is it that makes Venus boil? The biggest reason is its atmosphere. It's made up almost entirely of carbon dioxide. The atmosphere is so thick that it leads to the planet warming up non-stop. Basically, the gases in the atmosphere prevent thermal radiation from leaving Venus. So, the planet simply can't cool down. The water on its surface constantly turns into vapor. If the surface of Venus was food, then its atmosphere would be the microwave. That's why the temperatures in this world can go up to 870 degrees Fahrenheit. What would it be like to live on Venus? On Earth, seasons change because of the planet's tilt, but Venus doesn't experience any significant changes throughout the year. Things are pretty constant at night and during the day too. And what about the view of the sky? The clouds on Venus appear yellow or bright white. They're mostly made of poisonous sulfuric acid, but then why does Venus appear reddish orange when you look at it from Earth? Talking about the true colors of planets can be a tricky business. The hue of a space body might be different when you look at it from another planet. If we traveled all the way to Venus, a reddish brown surface would welcome us. The molecules of carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid block sunlight coming into Venus's surface, hence the reddish orange color of the planet. Oh, and did you know that Venus is often called Earth's twin? Both planets are nearly equal in size. Both have relatively young surfaces and thick atmospheres with clouds. Plus, the orbit of Venus is also the closest to Earth. That might raise a question about the possibility of life on Venus. I'm sorry to break the news, but no. Nope. Venus is not habitable. The next destination is Mars. Unlike Venus, Mars has seasons due to the planet's tilt on its axis. It also has a secondary seasonal effect caused by its highly elliptical orbit. The southern hemisphere has colder winters and hotter summers than those in the northern hemisphere. The average temperature on Mars is negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit. But temperatures can also range from the poles to the equator, and they can change very dramatically within a single week. Still. Not that bad compared to the previous two planets, huh? Is Mars habitable? The number one thing a living organism should worry about here is space radiation. Earth has a magnetic field and a thick atmosphere to protect its surface from radiation. Mars has neither. The planet's gravity is one-third of Earth's. So, weaker gravity and a thinner atmosphere make it harder for any living being to survive on the red planet. In 2013, NASA reported an ancient freshwater lake that could have been a hospitable environment for microbial life. This is evidence now that liquid water once flowed on Mars. This confirmation suggests that Mars could have had the necessary environment to support life. But what happened to the water on Mars? The most popular explanation is that the planet's atmosphere became too thin and cold to keep liquid water on Mars's surface. The disappearance of water might also be related to the loss of early magnetic fields. Or the reason might be the red planet's size. Mars is probably too small to keep water. So for now, Mars is not habitable. But you know scientists keep sending missions to Mars. Maybe they'll find some new information. Let's wait and see. Now Jupiter. Have you ever wondered what it might be like to live on the biggest planet in our solar system? 
Jupiter's environment is an unlikely place to support life. The temperatures on this planet and its composition are too extreme for any organisms to appear there. Jupiter has layers of gas, mostly hydrogen and helium. These gases fill the entire planet. Quite literally, there is no solid surface on the planet. Gases go all the way to the core, below the surface. They become liquid and turn into plasma because the atmospheric pressure there is way more intense than any place on Earth. To put it into perspective, an organism on Jupiter has to resist 1,000 times more atmospheric pressure than it would on Earth. Can a living being survive in such conditions? Unlikely. Jupiter is completely uninhabitable. But hey, have you heard that its moon Europa might be a possible habitable zone? Change of scenery. Saturn. It's the second largest planet in our solar system. Like Jupiter, Saturn is a gas giant ball, mainly consisting of hydrogen and helium. What about temperatures on Saturn? It's freezing. Plus, there are extremely powerful winds there. The winds in Saturn's upper atmosphere reach the speed of 1,600 feet per second. Let's compare them to storms on Earth to have a better understanding. The strongest hurricane ever recorded on Earth was moving at 350 feet per second. So the answer to the question, is there life on Saturn? Seems pretty obvious. Life as we understand it doesn't exist there. The next stop is Uranus, one of the largest ice giants. Uranus's atmosphere is dominated by ice, but it's not the only reason that causes the planet's blue color. It's also the methane in the atmosphere. It absorbs red light and reflects blue. The same goes for Neptune. Uranus is the coldest planet in the solar system. The temperatures there can be as low as negative 371 degrees Fahrenheit. Life on Earth needs sunlight to get energy, but there's nothing on Uranus that can produce any energy for life forms to thrive. The bottom line is Uranus doesn't have the environment to sustain life. Heading for Neptune, the second ice giant. What is there on the planet furthest from the sun? Obviously, it's incredibly chilly. There's neither a source of energy that bacterial life can exploit, nor a source of liquid water. Currently, scientists believe it's unlikely to find life on Neptune because of such unfriendly conditions. So, what makes our planet so livable? And I'm not just talking about human life, I mean any living organisms, even microbes. Life requires very special conditions to exist. All living beings need some sort of food, water, and the right temperature to develop. The atmosphere is a vital element. Humans, for instance, need oxygen to breathe, and they can only survive in temperatures that aren't extremely hot or cold. Another thing is gravity. All the other planets I've mentioned don't have exactly the same conditions as Earth. Life there would probably be different than what we have here. All living beings on Earth have adapted to our atmosphere, and life forms elsewhere would need to be able to survive in that planet's conditions. Our good old solar system is actually a pretty bizarre place. Well, with all its out-of-this-world phenomena that we humans haven't managed to explain yet, there are rumors that a gigantic, undiscovered planet is hiding behind Neptune. Volcanoes on Pluto spew ice, and a colossal canyon on Mars can accommodate the whole U.S. territory and most of Cleveland. Well, let's figure out if it's true by talking about the most mystifying solar system facts. The solar system is 4.6 billion years old. So old, it's a senior solar system. Scientists came to this conclusion after they studied the oldest material they managed to get a hold of. And by that, I mean meteorites, of course. You won't be able to wear a hat on Venus, ever, and just try to stand on your feet. The planet is insanely windy. Its upper winds blow 50 times faster than the planet rotates. What's more, these fierce winds never stop and can get even stronger with time. Want to get away? You'll have to travel 11 billion miles away from Earth before ever leaving the solar system. Take your Google Maps with you. You probably heard of methane gas, a byproduct of natural processes such as volcanic activity and cows. Anyway, this gas is not only a part of the Martian atmosphere, but also the thing that confuses astronomers to no end. The thing is that the volume of methane on Mars keeps wavering, and scientists just can't figure out where it might be coming from. 
Can there be cows on Mars? As you may remember, Pluto used to be a planet but was stripped of this title in 2006. Later, it was reclassified as a dwarf planet. Gee, make up your mind! But the most unexpected fact about this celestial body is that its diameter is smaller than that of the US. See for yourself. The greatest distance across the country, from Maine to Northern California, is about 2,800 miles. As for Pluto, it's only 1,473 miles across. The planet Uranus, or Uranus, you can't win either way, rotates on its side, and astronomers have no idea why the planet has chosen such an unusual position. The culprits could be ancient mega-powerful collisions, but so far it's just a theory. By the way, this is the only planet laying on its side. Our Sun is insanely massive. Want some proof? Well, 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system is in the mass of the Sun. In particular, the hydrogen and helium it's made of. The remaining 0.14% is mostly the mass of the solar system's eight planets. Earth might not be the only tectonically active planet in the solar system. Astronomers have spotted some landforms looking like cliffs on Mercury. If it's so, the tectonic activity could explain the rapid shrinking of the planet. In most sci-fi movies about space, the main character gets into an asteroid belt and must dodge countless rocks that threaten to damage their spacecraft. Well, sorry to disappoint, but that's nothing like the real thing. The only asteroid belt astronomers know about is located between Mars and Jupiter. There are thousands of asteroids in this region, but they're so widely spaced that the chance of collision is next to nothing. Ah, you just ruined it. Sorry. Behind the orbit of Neptune lies the mysterious Kuiper Belt, filled with massive icy objects. The most curious thing about this space formation, though, is that scientists can't explain the pattern of its movement. The only explanation they have is that Neptune might be hiding a ginormous planet from our sight. This hypothetical planet has already got the name Planet 9, and all we have to do is wait until its existence is confirmed. Or not. Volcanoes on Earth are as different from those on Pluto as fire and ice. And I mean it. While we have volcanoes spilling lava on our planet, the volcanoes on Pluto spit ice. When frozen water expands, and this enormous pressure builds up until one day, bang, the ice erupts. In the process, a new cryovolcano gets formed. One of Saturn's moons, Lapidus, has a unique color. It's two-toned. One of its hemispheres is light and the other is eerily dark. Scientists haven't figured out this mystery yet. There's another weird thing about Pluto, or rather, about its atmosphere. First, it rises way higher above the surface of the dwarf planet than, for example, the Earth's atmosphere. What's more, the atmosphere on Pluto has more than 20 layers, and all of them are super cold and very condensed. We live inside the Sun. No, I don't mean that we're inhabitants of the red-hot ball of light approximately 93 million miles away. The thing is that the Sun's atmosphere stretches far beyond its visible surface, and our planet is right within its reach. In fact, it's the gusts of solar wind that create the breathtaking phenomenon known as the Northern and Southern Lights. The ocean on Jupiter is larger than any other on the rest of the solar system's planets. But wait! It's not the type of ocean you're thinking about. The one on Jupiter isn't made of water. This mesmerizing thing consists of metallic hydrogen, and its depth is a staggering 25,000 miles, which is almost the same as the circumference of the Earth. The Sun's atmosphere is hotter than the surface of the star. While on the surface, the temperature reaches 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the upper atmosphere heats up to millions of degrees. Scientists suspect that explosive bursts of heat from the Sun may have something to do with this unique phenomenon. People came to know about Saturn's beautiful rings in the 1600s. But only recently, it became apparent that Saturn isn't the only ringed planet. All the gas giant planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Jupiter, have rings of their own, but they're thin and almost impossible to see. As for Mars, Venus, and Earth, they're made of rocky materials and have no rings whatsoever. 
Our solar system isn't the only one in the Milky Way galaxy. Far from it. The galaxy we live in houses about 100 billion solar systems. And if that's just our galaxy alone, can you imagine how many there are in the whole universe? At any given moment here on Earth, you can stumble across a rock that's arrived from Mars. After scientists analyzed the chemical content of some meteorites found in the Sahara Desert, Antarctica, and other places on our planet, they came to the shocking conclusion that they have a Martian origin. Since Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, many people simply assume that it's also the hottest. And that's where they get it wrong, because, in fact, Venus, which is about 30 million miles further from the Sun than Mercury, is way hotter. The thing is that Venus has an incredibly thick atmosphere, which is 100 times denser than the one we have on Earth. On top of that, this atmosphere consists almost entirely of carbon dioxide, also known as a greenhouse gas. These factors make the temperatures on the planet rise to a staggering 875 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to melt lead. As for Mercury, its maximum temperatures reach only 800 degrees. Jupiter's moon, Io, exists in never-ending chaos due to hundreds of smoking volcanoes on its surface. If you ever visit this place, send me a postcard. Now, you'll see the smoke from these volcanoes billowing up high into Lowe's atmosphere. The most enormous volcano in the whole solar system, at least that we know of, is on Mars. The size of this monster is almost as great as the state of Arizona, and its height is as big as that of Mount Everest. How did it grow this huge? The answer is simple. There's much less gravity on Mars in comparison with our planet. Even if you're a tiny celestial body, you can still have a moon of your own. Hey, it's not that hard. In 1993, the Galileo probe was traveling past a miniature asteroid that was no bigger than 20 miles across and discovered the little thing had a one-mile-wide moon. Since then, astronomers have found tons of moons orbiting minor planets in our solar system. The valley called Valles Marineris on Mars is more than 10 times larger than Earth's Grand Canyon. And it's another thing that puzzles astronomers. After all, Mars isn't a planet with active plate tectonics. On the surface of Jupiter, there's a weird region that's called the Great Red Spot. Recently, astronomers have concluded that this spot is actually a storm that's been raging on the planet for centuries. But some 20 years ago, scientists noticed that the red region started to shrink. Nowadays, it's just half the size it used to be. And still, the spot is one and a half times bigger than Earth. How about you? Do you know any other unusual facts about our solar system that I've missed? Then let me know down in the comments. If you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. But hey, don't go space traveling just yet! We have over 2,000 cool videos for you to check out. All you have to do is pick the left or right video, click on it, and enjoy. Stay on the bright side of life. Mercury, about 3.8 billion years ago. A huge asteroid is about to collide with the planet. Boom! Fragments are flying in different directions, along with the blast wave. When the dust settles, we see a crater almost the size of Lake Ontario. The most interesting thing here is the shape of the crater. It looks like a spider. A round body in the center and a bunch of legs that spread out from the crater in different directions. But the strangest thing is that the spider's legs don't quite line up with the center. Scientists can only guess how such a landscape was formed. Some think that the picture of the spider appeared there much earlier, and the meteorite falling almost into its center was just a coincidence. But we still don't have a clear explanation of how such scars could have appeared on the surface of Mercury. Another mystery about Mercury is how it was born. One theory claims that the planet used to be Venus's moon, but over time, it succumbed to the sun's gravity. The star literally ripped Mercury away, and the little planet began orbiting it. What might prove this theory is the rotation periods of Mercury and Venus. Mercury is gradually losing its rotational speed. One day on this planet now equals 58 Earth days and continues to increase. At the same time, after losing its heavy load, Venus has started rotating a little faster. Another theory says 
that Mercury collided with Venus shortly after the appearance of the solar system. At that time, proto-Mercury was slightly larger than the planet we're familiar with these days. But then, Mercury lost part of its crust after colliding with Venus. And a little later, Venus collected this debris. But scientists still can't come up with a definitive answer as to how Mercury was formed. Uranus, a gas giant, 18 Earth sun distances from our home. This planet seems calm compared to other giants, like Jupiter with its Earth sized storms. And still, Uranus has something unusual to boast about. This dark spot, for example, was detected by the Hubble telescope in 2006. At that time, it was almost twice the size of Alaska. A few years later, bright spots appeared there. It turned out that they were methane clouds that moved across the surface of the planet at a speed of 300 miles per hour. But we don't know what exactly causes such storms on Uranus. Maybe we can solve this secret by looking at another mystery of Uranus. This planet rotates while lying on its side. If you look at the axis of our planet, you'll see that it's vertical and only slightly tilted. It's the same for most of the planets in our solar system. But not Uranus. Its axis is almost horizontal and pointed toward the Sun. One of the poles of Uranus is fully illuminated at almost all times. The polar day on the planet lasts for 42 Earth years. When the tilt of Uranus's axis changes, the polar day starts on the other side of the planet. The other pole plunges into darkness for 42 years. This change of seasons can cause severe storms on the planet's surface. But why exactly Uranus lies on its side is unknown. Perhaps billions of years ago, the gas giant collided with several asteroids that were about to become a young planet. Such a protoplanet, similar in size and weight to Earth, could have tilted Uranus after crashing into it. But it's still just a hypothesis. Now let's go to Jupiter's moon, Europa. The big mystery here is whether there is life on this moon. Scientists don't deny such a possibility. All you see on the moon's surface is ice. The stripes you may spot are actually long, wide cracks. For a long time, scientists thought this moon was nothing more than a block of ice. But now, they think there might be liquid water inside. The core of Europa is heated by the tidal forces of Jupiter. This warm core melts the ice around it. So there really could be a huge ocean under the ice crust. Since water is the basis of life, different microorganisms could exist there. But we would only find out if we sent a probe there. We would have to drill through two dozen miles of solid ice and start searching in an ocean twice the size of all water reservoirs on Earth. Look at Saturn's moon Titan. It's the second largest moon in the solar system. It's 50% bigger than Earth's natural satellite. It's the only place in our solar system other than Earth where liquid water has been proven to exist. But the most interesting thing about Titan is its atmosphere. It's 250 miles thick. This distance is almost 40 times greater than the average cruising altitude of commercial planes on Earth. And it's 95% nitrogen. For comparison, Earth's atmosphere is 79% nitrogen, which means they're quite similar. The mystery is that no one knows how this atmosphere appeared there. One theory suggests that many years ago, meteorites hit Titan's surface almost non-stop. Massive rocks collided with the crust, raising the pressure and temperatures on the moon. Under such conditions, the ammonia in the air decomposed into nitrogen and hydrogen. The heavy nitrogen fell on Titan's surface, while the light hydrogen rose and flowed out into space. But some scientists dispute this theory. Another mystery of the solar system is the hypothetical star Nemesis, and whether it really exists. If you look at all the stars of our galaxy, most of them are paired, which means that two stars orbit around each other. Statistically, the Sun must also have a companion. So, some scientists have made an assumption that the largest mass extinctions on Earth were related to some mysterious object in space. They hypothesized that there was a red dwarf somewhere within 1.5 light years away from the center of the solar system, and every approach of this dwarf star to the asteroid cloud disturbed these space travelers. Every time it happened, several asteroids began their journey toward Earth and caused a mass extinction. But this star hasn't yet been discovered, and many scientists question this hypothesis. Now let's look at the very edge of the solar system. A photon of light has to travel one year to get here. 
Scientists believe the Oort cloud exists in that area. It's a hypothetical region where tons of asteroids and blocks of ice gather into clouds. It's the furthest place where the sun's gravity still works. Presumably, this spherical cloud wraps around the solar system. This is the region where long-period comets are thought to originate. They fly all the way through the solar system and then return to the Oort cloud. This journey can take thousands of years. Even more exciting, there could be a gas giant called Tyche in that region. Some scientists say it might be four times the size of Jupiter. So far, no research has confirmed its existence. Although the Oort cloud is still considered hypothetical, some scientists believe that comets from that area are responsible for the major mass extinctions on Earth. Now let's go beyond the borders of the solar system. There, 1,500 light years away from Earth, there's the closest to our home planet, Black Hole. Black holes are the most mysterious objects in the universe. They're so heavy that they attract not only matter, but also light. Even more, they slow down time. Once something gets trapped in a black hole's gravity, it never escapes. Light and matter gradually settle near the event horizon and soon disappear into infinite darkness. Time flows differently here. One minute near a black hole can be equal to weeks on Earth. The biggest mystery is what exactly is inside a black hole. Some speculate that there's nothing but crushing pressure that destroys anything that gets there. Others say it might be a portal to another dimension or a wormhole to another place in the universe. If it was true, white holes would exist as well as exits from black hole portals and wormholes. But no white hole has been found so far. Now, how about going to the hypothetical border of the entire universe? It's called the Eridanus Supervoid. If you look at the map of the universe, you'll see an empty cold spot about 1 billion light years wide. The entire Milky Way galaxy is only 100,000 light years across. The main mystery is how the spot appeared. One theory says this void is the scar left by the collision of two parallel universes. Imagine that universes are giant bubbles, and one day, two of these bubbles collided. That's when the parallel universe ripped several galaxies out of our bubble. So far, this is the only explanation for how such a huge cold void could appear in our universe.